Okay, good morning all and thank you for watching. I'm going to do a quick video on how I do my designs on Inkscape. Inkscape is a great software. It's free, free to download, and you can use it for so many other things. All right, I'm going to do a, a basic sign. All right, so first thing I need to do is I need to get a shape. So I'm going to go into File, I need to import an image. Now, these are a bunch of shapes I previously found on uh, the internet. Uh, Save them onto my laptop. And they're there. Okay, so you import that. You get this little box come up. Just click OK. You have your image come up. Now, that's an image, and we need to make it into a vector. So we go into Path, Object to Path, and then again, Path, Trace Bitmap. Put on preview. You don't need to mess with any of these settings over here. They're all pretty much perfect as they are. That's going to give you, it looks a bit grainy, but when it's uh, a vector, it, it's fine. It removes all the pixels. So hit OK. Close that. Now you'll have two objects. This one is the vector. This is the image. Don't need that anymore. We can delete that. Now if you want to use this multiple times, you just Control D and it duplicates as many times as you want. But we don't want to do that, just to show you. Okay, now the other problem with this is it's too dark. So we need to get rid of the, the color infill. So we're going to go into Object, Fill, and Stroke. It's dealing with the color. And come over here to the right to this menu. You've got Stroke, Fill, and Stroke Style. You want to hit Stroke Paint and activate it. There we go. What that does is it puts a border around the uh, vector that you've got there. Now I'm going to go back to fill. I'm going to turn the fill off. And you can see now you've just got the border outline. If I was to turn the stroke off as well, um, everything would disappear. But don't want to do that, so let's bring it back. Okay, so now we have an image. Now we need to put some text into it. So I'm going to come over here to the left hand bar. I'm going to hit A, which is text. And I'm going to do something like uh, make a sign. Make a uh, All right, now, so we've got our text in there. But I don't like that font, so I'm going to change that real quick. All right, we come up to text at the top. You've got text and font. Click on that. Opens another bar menu on the right hand side. And this will give you your list of fonts. You can download more over in DaFont and add them in. I personally really like uh, Carnival Freak Show. It's an interesting uh, <laughs> title for a font, but I think it has a good effect. Okay, so now we've changed our font type, but we need to resize it. So I'm going to come up to the arrow. Up here, click on that. It highlights this the image, and I'm going to stretch it. Right now, that's pretty good. The only thing I don't, uh, I can't really do is I can't align it perfectly by eye. So we have another tool that we can do. First, we need to highlight the outer image, and then we're going to go into Object. And at the very bottom, you see Align and Distribute. Again, opens another menu on the right-hand side, and it says Align relative to Page. We don't want Page at the moment. We want Last Selected. And so there we go for that. Now we're going to align it top to bottom and left to right. So top to bottom, left to right, and now we have an image that's perfectly centered. Okay, so I'm happy with that. That's something I would then print and carve, or I would then send to a, a, a prospective client. But if I was actually going to take this to the next step and print it, first I need to make it a group. So come up into Object, Group. Now that makes it one object. I can move it around. It's not going to change. And I need to get it in to this little page over here. 
align that there. Okay. There we are. Now, if you print it like that, that's exactly what you'll get. But if you're doing the laser uh, transfer method with these uh, thinners, you need a mirror image. So back up to object, do flip horizontal. That will now give you your mirror image. But it's also a bit small for me, so I'm going to resize it. Um, the sizing is in pixels at the moment. I don't like that or understand it, so I go into inches. And we've got 4.9 inches wide, 2.5 inches high. Now, when I go to print this, I'm going to turn it on its side. So I'm going to make the height of this picture the same width as that page. So it's an A4, which is 8 by 11. So I'm going to do it just a little bit under 7.5. Oh, see this little lock button? I like the proportions of this, so I'm going to click lock. If you don't, uh, just the height will become 7 and the width will stay the same. I want them both to change. So 7.5. All right, so now we have our new side. All right, to be able to get that into that uh, paper, I need to rotate it. So back up to object. Rotate 90 degrees clockwise. All right, now we want to get it centered because we're going to have to do this in two printings. So back up to the Align and Distribute menu. I'm going to go from Last Selected to Page. All right, I want to center it left and right on the page. So now it's exactly centered. So after we print the first one, when we have to go print the second bit, you're just lining up the pages and it comes out perfectly. If I was going to print this now, I might move it down a little bit, align it again, print that section. Of course, this section wouldn't come out. So I then move this one, move this uh, down. <laughs> that didn't work quite well. I ungrouped it somehow. I'm just going to select the whole thing. Alright, so I print the first one, I get that, and I just move the entire object down. It never goes right at the end, does it? There we go. All right, so we can shift that up and down. Now, if it was bigger, let me just group that again. Uh, say it was uh, A3, A2, A5, wh whatever size you wanted. I can change the uh, uh, width here. So I'll do that as 15. So it remakes the entire sign to scale. And now you have to do one corner at a time. And what I do is I'd line it up, line it up to page. But instead of lining up in the center, I'd go either to the left-hand side, like that one. Oh, sorry, I need to do the inside bit. I line it up there, print that section. Line it up on the other side, that section, and so on and so forth until I get all four of the quadrants. Um, I might actually even add some lines into that so it's easier for me to uh, uh, line it all up. I hope you guys could understand that. I hope that was pretty simple um, and thank you for watching.